Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas with the bad ala sunnah the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One thing I was asked recently for general advice about the rights of the husband and wife and general advice for people who are entering in a polygamous relationship for the wife and the husband. And so I'll briefly try to be concise about some of the things I uh, advised with from my studies in the chapter of Nikah and speaking to the ulama, some of the ulama of Islam about some of these issues. Regarding the rights of the husband and the rights of the wife in Islam, the right of the wife is that she has the right to be taken care of. She does not have to work. She does not have to be a contributor to the household, even if she does work. The general situation is that the husband, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الرجال, الرجال nisa, that the men are the maintainers and protectors of the women. And Allah has favored the men over the women in that they are the ones who go get their uh, seek rizq, you know, seek provisions. So that in Islam, men are required to take care of women. He is responsible for her food, her drink, her shelter, and her clothing. That is the asl, that is Islam. So those are the general rights regarding uh, the woman. And that if she works, if she chooses to contribute, that's her, 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 her choice. And if the husband and wife have an agreement of some sort, that's between them. But we're talking about the general rights of the husband and wife in Islam. As far as the husband, his right, the primary right, is that when he calls his wife for physical relations and stuff, she should not refuse. So the right of the husband is that he is taken care of physically by his wife. That they enjoy one another. And that she does not refuse him, even when she's upset, that she should try to humble herself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and try to comfort her husband. And so those are the general rights with regards to husband and, and, and wife. As far as choosing when a person is entering a, a polygamous situation, for one, they should be, first and foremost, have the ability to do so. That means either, as the Prophet wasallam said, and as we mentioned in the hadith, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, men istata'a minkum al-ba'ata faliyatazawaj. O youth, whoever amongst you is able to marry, then they should marry. So, the Prophet ﷺ linked ability with getting married. So, for example, the husband, and we hear some nightmare stories. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for, you know, in any which way some of our brothers and sisters play with the institution of marriage. Brothers on welfare, having several wives, all of them on welfare, he doesn't work. That is not going with the, the, the maqsood of nikah. That, you know, he, he's, he's lost his, his strength as a man because he's supposed to pro provide. Part of that manhood is providing for his, his wife or wives. So the first thing is having that ability, as the ulama mentioned, with regards to that hadith, فَمَنِ اسْتَطَعَ مِنْكُمْ الْبَعَى فَلِيَتَزَوِّجْ الْبَعَى here, الْبَعَى refers to the financial ability, meaning the mahr and the ability to take care of his wife. So first thing is that if a man is going to choose another wife, then he should be, uh, he should financially be able to take care of another wife, to bring in another family, as well as his, 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 uh, his first family. 
And of course, there's always exceptions. If a woman, maybe she's a wealthy woman and she doesn't need to be taken care of, but those are the exceptions. But the general thing is, is that a husband takes care of his wife, as Allah says, that the men are the maintainers and protectors of the women. So that is the, the general right of the women to be taken care of. So a man should have the ability to do so. Uh, also, he should be considerate, at least, of his other family. At least consider it. This is from the point of advice. This is not a condition. But he should be considered of his family because often some women are unable to deal with that situation and it results in divorce and there's children involved. So all of those things should be kind of considered. You should consider that before taking another wife because this can be uh, causing harm to your, your family and cause families to break up. Also, you should consider the uh, consider compatibility that is the new family going to be compatible with your family meaning that they don't have to be best friends they don't have to necessarily see each other but the point is is it makes it easier on the man if he has families that can uh, at least tolerate and have some cooperation that you are a family unit not that you are two separate people competing with your husband, driving your, you know, trying to drive your husband, tear, tear him apart. That's a very serious thing. So the husband should be conscious of that. Also, he should be conscious of, yes, how that's going to affect the children, if you have children, and, and generally the, the well-being, and, and whatever you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to do talab al-ilm, it's not easy. The more family you add a lot of times, it's going to be more responsibility. You have to realize marriage is responsibility, more time and so forth that's going to be taken away from your studies or whatever you're trying to achieve. So all of that has to be um, uh, considered. But what is an obligation in a condition or an obligation if you do take another wife is that you're just and that you're just with what? You're just with your time and you're just with your spending. But your heart, the inclination of your heart, that love, that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has made muwadda and rahmah between the spouses. And a person, a man, does not have two uh, hearts, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and that he may be inclined towards one or like one of his wives for certain attributes more than another one for that attribute, and the other one he might like for other attributes. This one might have you know, be more educated. This one might have more beauty. This one, you know, whatever the situation, this one might like to exercise and he likes that. This one might like to read and he likes that. Whatever the situation. So they complement. So you must also consider all of those things. But the most important thing is that he must be just with his families. And some of the things that we hear, and these are real situations. I have had people ask me this a real situation where a particular brother, he wanted to marry his sister, and the sister called me. She wanted me, for one, to be her, her wali, her guardian, because she didn't have an Islamic guardian. And she said that this man, he wanted to go seek knowledge outside of the country. He wanted her to work in order to gain the provision so that he could go study, and maybe they could both go study. He also wanted her to be talib al-ilm. And I mentioned two things to her. One of the things is that first, uh, you know, she should learn the basics of her religion so she can, you know, those things so she can practice. But not everybody's talib al She was saying that she's not studious like that. She wants to cook and clean and take care of her husband. And that is what is re required of her. It's not required that she, be, that she becomes a student of knowledge and, 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 and is really studious in the books. But that they study a hadith, they benefit, they, and they give themselves some soul food, Soul food meaning food for the soul and the heart related to Islam, learning the obligations, then yes, that, that is an, an obligation. Every Muslim, إِنُّهُ وَاجِبُوا عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمْ إِنْ تَعْلَمْ أَرْبَى مَسَائِلْ You know, it's an obligation upon every Muslim to know who Allah is and know who the Prophet ﷺ is and know the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. The other point was, is he was trying to use some text, and I don't know where he... I, 
was coming up with his ta'wil, and this was just showing the shamefulness of how some of the brothers are, of where she has to work and take care of him, so he can study the deen. And that's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. If you have a wife, she's wealthy, and she wants to do that responsibility, then, then that's, that's fine. You've reached that, uh, rela that uh, uh, compromise in your relationship or, or what have you. You guys have come to that together. But the man cannot make the woman work to take care of him. He cannot make her take care of him and take care of him and his other wives or take care of him so he can go study and be comfortable and seek knowledge and she's struggling, maybe in a non-Islamic environment. So that's not what uh, the marriage bond. Another point I wanted to mention, another situation that I heard of in one of the particular communities that a brother was having to sit down to take a, a, either a, a third or a fourth wife. All of his other wives are on welfare. He wasn't working. He wanted to marry a sister. And he said, sister, are you going to be able to take care of me and my family? This is ludicrous. You know, it seems like a, a cartoon, and it's, but unfortunately, these are real situations and real shameful situations that a Muslim would even be to that type of, you know, humiliating themselves and, and, and trying to humiliate others with just transgressing the bounds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not the Islamic bond to be asking the woman to take care of you. But in fact, it's the other way around. If you reach an agreement, that's something different. But the asl is that the men take care of the women. That is what Islam encourages us to do. So those are just some of the tips. But what about for the women? The women, for one, it requires patience. And there's going to be a natural jealousy. And that is, uh, you know, the natural inclination. Even the wives of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, radiallahu ta'ala anhunna, that they, they had jealousy. The um, ummahat mu'minin. They had jealousy. And so that's a natural inclination. However, not keeping your jealousy and keeping your things within the bounds of the shutter. Do not do un-Islamic activities. Do not throw things. Do not take weapons. Do not curse. Do not attack and fight. Do not, uh, you know, and, and cause fitna and harm to the other, to the new family. Or whatever the situation is. It requires patience. But your reward is Jannah. If you keep your household together, and especially if you have children involved, and you're patient, your reward is Jannah. Is there anything better than that? This life is temporary, and it's going to cease. But keeping the goal that this marriage is going to strengthen you and help you come closer to Allah, that's something to keep, uh, to consider. And so, we should strive our best to be patient, and for the women to be patient if they're in a situation like that, and strive, if you can, to get along with the new family. But if you can't, and you have to keep your distance because you know yourself, then maybe for some people that's better. But the ultimate situation is if they can work together and they can actually become friends and act like one family and help and support one another. You know, help strengthen each other through counseling one another, advising one another, and, 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 and helping their husband. Some other points that I want to mention is the issue of the women that have that, that some of the rights in those situations is that the women have a right to their own dwelling space. That a man cannot force them to be in one room or one house and stuff. She has the right to her own dwelling. That's her right. Now, if you have agreements for something else, that's between you and your family. But the general thing is the woman has the right to her own dwelling. That's her haq. So you can't compromise her haq and force her to compromise the haq. So that's also important too because some situations where we hear people having one bedroom, two bedroom, and forcing their wives to, to stay together and things like this. This is, this is not uh, 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 something, this is not a right that they have to, to play with. But in fact, they have to go back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and look at those conditions. And in our future sittings regarding nikah we will talk about some of the conditions in nikah and the conditions of nikah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam